Hello everyone. I get asked a lot about voxel optimizations uh, and there are a lot of things you can do to optimize your voxels um, such as getting rid of interior faces and such but uh, there's one thing that I wanted to illustrate using space engineers because these guys do it better than anyone else I've ever seen and that is to optimize your voxels by stretching UV out over extended faces and I'll explain what that means here. This is a simple voxel this is a six-faced cube. Each of the faces has four verts. They don't share any verts. Um, the verts are in the same places. So this corner, for example, there are three verts that overlap. Uh, but each face has its own individual four verts, and each has its own individual two triangles. And it's not a very large object in terms of how much it takes to render it. But when you've got 20,000 of them, it can get pretty daunting. And that's why optimizations are so important. It's especially important when you're optimizing something like armor or structural hull when you're going to have a lot of random uh, stuff that just needs to be dealt with all the time. So this guy has thought of, or these people, have thought of a really interesting solution. The first step in their solution is, is that they've girded their voxel in these very simple little girders. These girders are three faces, they're triangles, with two faces as the caps. I think this is a little bit clumsy in terms of how it links up at the edges, as you can see, but it does what it needs to do, and that is it hides the seams. And the reason they have to hide the seams is because their tiles do not repeat. They do not have repeat safe tiles. Now if you've ever built, you know, a tile based RPG or whatever, you know that the struggle, you know the struggle that comes from having to have a, a system where all of your grass repeats well and doesn't look too um, blocky and that sort of stuff. Same problem with voxels. Theirs uh, don't repeat very well. If I were to take this face here and put it again here and again here, it would look awful. It doesn't even look good when you put this face here and this face here. Um, the edges don't line up right and they just they don't look right. But the reason that they don't have tiling a uh, tile pattern that works is because they do this really cool trick. So I mentioned that this guy here is a six faces, just a cube with six faces. This is exactly the same. It's, a, it's not a cube anymore, but it still has exactly six faces. It still has exactly two uh, triangles per face and exactly four verts per face. And it still has the same number of girders with the same number of faces. It's just been stretched. So this is an interesting uh, and, and fun way to optimize. What they've done is the UV pattern that they were using, they've simply widened it. So if you were to imagine a normal um, uh, grid of, of, of stuff, you might have like grass and then maybe the bottom part of a tree and then maybe the top part of a tree and then maybe a door. You know, you, you line up all that random stuff so you can use it. What they've got instead is they've got an image that is, the, that is a plate of metal and they just chop the image up into whatever tiles they happen to see fit and as they grow then they just have more and more of the image showing. And if you do 2D they just show more of the image in that direction. Oops. They just show more of the image in that direction. So you get more of the image showing. And the, the full image actually tiles pretty well with itself. So if I were to stretch this out really, really quite far, we would eventually see it repeat. See? Actually, it might not be... Oh, is it, does it mirror first? Well, whatever. Um, you would eventually start to see repeating patterns in this. And that was that's fine, because it has to be over such great distances that no one would ever really notice or, or, or take offense if they did. Um, but this pattern is awesome because it allows them to create these massive planks of voxels which have the exact same weight as just one voxel. This huge slab has exactly the same number of faces and verts uh, as, as a, the, the, one, the one block did. And I think that that's a really clever trick. I'm not sure whether they're doing it quite right with the girding. I have a sneaking suspicion that they are not stretching the girders correctly and are instead duplicating them, but uh, that's something I'm actually not not a big fan of how they've handled their girders. Uh, they they never really sat well with me, but they look pretty damn nice if you don't look at them too closely and don't think about what they're there for.
Either way, uh, this is a very, very nice trick, and it's, a, it's an optimization tool that I didn't figure out until just now, and I plan to add it to my repertoire immediately. The only problem with this is that it doesn't work very well with the palette-based face system I've been using. Instead, what this is used for is it's used for voxels that are entirely defined by, um, by a specific texture. So this texture, this armor texture, it's not used in any of the other voxel objects. So if I put down one of these, that it doesn't share the texture. If I put down one of these, it doesn't share the texture. But to be honest, these aren't really voxels anyway. These objects are, are objects that just happen to fill a grid point. So this is a, a method for optimizing something where you're going to have a lot of the same kind of voxel and you want to make it look great and take up less space. And this is the way to do that. Um, and I thought maybe you guys would like to see one more way to optimize your voxels. Um, and I especially like this way because it actually makes your voxels look better. I don't know anyone who hasn't been impressed by how the armor seems to organically react as you add it and seems to just magically become an actual plate of armor rather than just blobby voxels. It's one of the biggest draws, I think, of this, uh, of the initial act of laying stuff down. When you lay stuff down, does it act like it knows that you laid it down? Does it act like it actually exists? Well, with this optimization method, it does. So it's a win-win all around. And um, I'm going to use it. I'm going to adopt it. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can figure out how to do it with my uh, slightly more complicated system as well. Not not sure if I can do that, though. It might just have to be for armor blocks. Either way, thanks for your patience.